Welcome to my video review of the M1 Plus Finger PC. This is a HDMI microcomputer which you plug into the port on a TV or a monitor. I'll show you quickly what you get in the box. We have a power adapter here with a micro USB port. There is an extension cable so that you can plug this into the HDMI socket and then plug this into that rather than directly into the back of the TV or monitor. There is a USB on the go adapter here. This converts the micro USB port to a standard USB port. And we also get a basic startup guide with instructions. Looking at the unit, you'll notice a couple of differences with this particular version. This has a small fan here which aids with the cooling and we also have ventilation slots around here and on both sides. That's designed to aid with the cooling of the processor and chips inside. Looking at the side we have a standard USB port and a micro USB. This is the port where you put the power adapter into. You'll see the power button next to it here. On the reverse side is a slot for a micro SD card and an additional slot for a micro USB. You can plug directly into that or use the adapter to convert to another standard USB port. Going into the main system here we can see we have the Intel Atom processor. It's clocked here at 1.33 GHz. That's because the processor is not being pushed. It can go up to around 1.8 GHz, although not all cores at the same time. So it's a variable speed processor. We have the 2 GB RAM here. 32-bit operating system as you would expect and Windows is activated. We can see that there's a license key activated on this. All of your settings and controls are exactly the same as you would expect for a normal computer, be it a desktop or a laptop. There's nothing different here. You can customize things a bit depending on what you want to do. So for example you can switch to the tablet mode which will change the layout of the screen. So for example you bring up the start menu. Instead of the start menu cascading up you get a similar experience that you used to get on Windows 8. It's also possible to get quick access here. So for example we can turn the Bluetooth on and off and a shortcut for the main system settings. So it performs exactly as you would expect a normal computer to perform. Right, so we're in the basic Android experience now. You'll see at the bottom here we have the normal controls and icons that we'd expect on an Android device, including um, the volume controls and the home button. Here is the power. You bring that up, you can boot to Windows or close the screen or just reboot or turn it off. And there is just an additional icon here which is a direct boot to Windows. So if you want to switch directly to Windows quickly, main app button here brings up the pre-installed apps. There's not a huge amount, just a basic um, smattering of apps on this. Enough here to get going and obviously you can download ones that you want specifically from the Play Store over on this side. Exactly as you would get with a normal Android device and the options and settings are exactly the same. Summing up for me with the Finger PC, I like the dual boot capability you have Android or Windows 10 and I like the fact you don't have to upgrade Windows 8.1 to 10 it's just there straight out of the box. Um, downsides the fan is an advantage with cooling on the other hand it is audible I would prefer to be able to either reduce the speed or that it would only come on when required. Um, saying that I did find after a period of time it didn't really bother me that much so it's possibly a non-issue for some people. Uh, in terms of capability, you will probably want to get a USB hub to expand the ports, but in terms of performance, this is quite a viable replacement for some people for a basic computer. The only thing that you'll probably need to do is add additional storage because you don't have a huge amount. Um, over a period of time, I'd expect these devices to improve with the processing power and also to offer more storage, but as it is right now, for the size of the product, you have a fully fledged computer and Android box. It's more expensive than traditional streaming clients or Android boxes, but it is a full blown computer. 
albeit with some limitations.